Hi guys, Redneck Computer Geek here. We're posting this over on RCG Racing and on the Facebook page so that you guys can be able to comment and say whatever you like about this build. So, this is a hot water tank, or rather it started its life as one, built into an air compressor. Now I'm sure that all of you have seen the Mythbusters thing where the hot water tank goes off like a rocket and rips apart everything and all of that kind of stuff. Hot water tanks are rated for 300 PSI when they are manufactured. They also have a anode tube that's down the center of them in order to eliminate rust problems in them. On top of that, we've got the original hot water tank safety rated 180 PSI. We also made sure to keep the standard air tank safety rated at 130 PSI. So unless something really majorly catastrophic, double failures plus that pump is incapable of reaching more than 130 PSI. Chances of exploding, pretty slim to none. But always, always double check your tanks and make sure you don't have any rust problems. And if you ever find rust problems in the bottom of your tank, whether you make it yourself or whether you buy one, always throw that tank away. So let's let Jesse take a look at this. And go from there. Meanie, you stole the hat. <laughs> they needed to see the size of the motor. Well, you stole the hat. All right, we're going to start with the back side first, and then we'll move to the front and discuss some things that went right and some things that went really wrong while doing this. This whole build has been a learning experience, and I'm going to share some things with you. So this plate here, I ended up stealing off of a $20 air compressor that I got off of Marketplace on Facebook because I decided I didn't want to reinvent the wheel. Having to go and figure out all of the different bolt hole patterns and everything else is a big giant pain that I didn't feel like dealing with. For this chunk of metal, it was worth spending the $20 in order to cut it off of some old tank that needed to be thrown away. I ended up having to purchase this pulley. Make sure you get a cast iron pulley. Over time, the aluminum ones, the zinc ones, they'll end up failing and you'll end up doing damage to stuff. Buy a cast iron, spend the extra money. I'll post a link in the description. Anything that I talk about here, I will make sure that I have a link for. This here is a three horsepower 220 motor from Harbor Freight. They're about $170 to about $200, depending on when you purchase them and whether you end up with a 20% off and all that kind of stuff. That's where this motor came from. You can definitely get compressor motors cheaper, but I wanted something that I knew that I could replace in an afternoon if I had to. They keep these in stock. When you go to buy compressor motors, you need to make sure that it says it was made for an air compressor because 220 motors come in different speeds. Needs to be compressor rated. This on the back side, this is a Go Plus air compressor. It is a two-cylinder V-twin air compressor, and it is only rated for about 130 PSI. This thing is never going to build monster air, and I never wanted it to. I wanted it to run for years and years and years and be safe to run because we are building it out of a hot water tank, okay? It comes with this V-pulley on it when you purchase it, just to answer the question I get repetitively. As far as this V-belt is concerned, you'll have to figure your own out when you go to do yours. It's pretty simple. All you do is run a rope around holding very tight to this. And when you run it around this piece here, it'll make it so it tightens up when you roll it over the top of the pulley. Again, do not measure your, your V-belt over the top of this. Measure it over the top of this outer shaft so that it is tight when you slip it onto the assembly. Also, another thing that you can do setting this up, and mine is done wrong, which Jesse will gladly point out to you. 
if she comes over to this side, <laughs> the easiest way to align these is to take the bigger pulley, and on most of these plates, usually these are not adjustable. It's this side that's your adjustment. You take this, you put it up against that, nice and tight, and then bring it down onto your pulley in order to hit your alignment point. As you can see, <laughs> and Jesse will point out, mine still needs some work. Right there. <laughs> Slip and slide. All right, let's take a look at the front of the machine. So, if you look at this, you're going to notice that there's one there, and there's one there. That was not because this was broken, that was not because of a manufacturer problem or anything else. That's actually because I used a used part originally, and it caused a failure. So, down in here, if Jesse can point down into this area, this down here is what's called a check valve. And what it does is when the air pushes through this line and goes down into the tank, it opens into the tank, fills the tank, and when the pump shuts off, the check valve comes up and it seals it away so that you don't lose all of your air. So I'll post a link to this check valve kit that I had down below. It comes with many different adapters. And what you can see here is that my check valve actually got stuck there and it overheated one side of my V pump and ended up causing it to burn out the air filter. So if we look down in there, that little white piece should move up and down and this one does not. I can't make it move around. The other thing with the pump is the pump needs to run fully synthetic oil. I'll make sure there's a link for this also. This pump in particular, it takes about half of a container worth when you first fire it up. After you run it for a few hours, you're going to need to drain it for break-in and put in brand spanking new. This is probably the biggest curse of doing this. This is actually my sixth attempt at being able to make this line that comes down and around and wraps in and goes into the check valve. So I will make sure to post a link for these. They are tubing bending springs, tube bending spring sets. And I literally destroyed four different sets of tube while trying to accomplish this and ended up ordering a set of these, destroyed another tube, proceeded to watch about five different YouTube videos on how to use these, and managed to build my sixth tube. Please, save yourself some time, save yourself a lot of money, considering this is worth about $3 a foot, so I destroyed about $26 worth while trying to figure this out. Order a set of these. This is the valve off of the $20 compressor that I ended up buying. I just rerouted this into the check valve system that's here. A hot water tank has an in and an out for your hot water and your cold water. And so I just have the out right where the out would have been from manufacturer. And I have the in right where the in was for the cold water. Otherwise than that, it's just your standard air compressor. I do get one last thing. Hot water tanks are built with a valve at the very bottom most point in order to be able to drain them when you have to take them out or for service in order to be able to do the electrodes. So this drains the water nicely. Are you still going? Holy cow. I'm going to have to like fast forward this section of the video. There we go. There 
we go, finally, all gone. So there we go, I just totally made a mess of my entire garage, just so you guys could have a video. And uh, yeah, my tank just peed all over my floor. It's supposed to get about 20, 24 degrees tonight. So, ice, uh, ice baby. Yeah, I'll have an ice skating rink to walk past tomorrow. Have fun, guys.